to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm going to do this real quick. I'm glad everybody was able to come. We, I, I've been told more are going to show up. So, um, But I am going to lay a little bit of foundation, if that's all right for you. Uh, be, uh, but I also like to give away product. Um, I believe if you're, you're going to get an increase, you've got to sow. And so why not give, right? Why not have the minister show everybody how to give, right? So um, this book isn't mine, but it's a good book anyway. Uh, this is one of the books that we, uh, we really push at the Prayer and Healing Center there at Rama, And uh, it's called Casting Your Care. Um, we find that sickness and disease a lot of times is connected to a lot of care, a lot of worry. Lot, there's a lot of worry and a care in the church. For whatever reason, we've got a lot of it. Um, God never meant man to live uh, with cares, worries, anxieties, uh, unknowns. God never meant that for man to walk in. And when man does walk in it, after you're born again, you're not living the fullest life you could if you lived outside of that. And so this book is a real good book uh, to learn how to cast your care. You might be shocked that you've got care that you don't even know you have. You know, I found with care, many times people have got them for years. And they've actually connected it to their personality. So they think their personality, that's just who they are. And so they live that way. And what they don't realize is it's a care, it's a worry, it's an anxiety. And it's from the enemy. But they go, but that's who I am. I can't change who I am. Oh, yes, you can. The Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so you can't change the way you think. And you know, the, you know, the Bible talks about, as a man thinketh in his heart, what is he? He is whatever he thinks. That's why he says, change your thinking. And so when you change your thinking, your life will change. Now, now I know that's difficult for some people because in life we face problems. We face people. We face situations. We face, uh, unfortunately, we, we face other believers that aren't living the way they should as a believer. No one's run into those people. No one's ever gotten in, gotten in, gotten in the company of a cranky believer. Oh, well, never, right? <laughs> If you haven't run into one, you have not been in the church very long. <laughs> and uh, see, that's why you need the joy. Keep people drunk in the spirit, then they won't be jerks to people. <laughs> and, so, and so learning how to live carefree. Now, you can be faced with cares, worries, and anxieties, but worries, cares, and anxieties don't have to get in you. Did you hear me? You can be faced with worries, cares, anxieties, but they don't have to get in you. I'm going to say it again. You can have worries, cares, anxieties that are presented to you every day, but they don't have to get in you. Praise God. Come on. Come on. So this is a great book. This is uh, Brother Hagin and uh, one of the greatest teachers. My, my, my person, one of the greatest teachers you'll ever hear. All right. One of them. Now, I didn't say he's the only one, so don't freak out. You're like, well, there's other good teachers out there. Well, there are. Now, he's gone on to be with the Lord, but his books are still anointed. Amen. 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 Who wants this? All right. I saw a hand. Okay. So, um, uh, most of the CDs that are back there, other than a couple, the, I have a couple of music CDs. We, a lot of people bought them last night, as we've got, um, and I might uh, talk about both of those tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning. Um, is, but the, these, these single CDs, these are what I did, uh, I personally have done over at the Prayer and Healing Center uh, uh, in the mornings at the Prayer and Healing Center and taught in the morning uh, when I was up to to teach and this one is uh, God in your house this is a real good in him reality CD all right and so when you realize who you are in Christ you'll never face a situation that you can't overcome you'll never face a person that you won't like 
Oh boy, that went over real well. I know when everybody gets silent and goes like like half dead on me, I'm like, woo, we're pushing buttons now. Brother, you have not met so-and-so, have you? <laughs> we have all met so-and-so. Every person has met that person that has the ability, however, however they're able to do it, push every button you got. All at the same time. Whole hand on all of them. Come Boom. On, and you want to just, you, listen, there is no such thing as loving anybody at that point. You just want to take them out and take them out in the parking lot and knock them out. <laughs> okay, you're all holy. Yeah. Much holier than me. Yeah. And so, learning who you are in Christ will keep that old thing called your flesh under. Because when you realize what's living down on the inside of you, it's much bigger than that flesh you got that gets that button pushed all the time. And I realize that in the, in the body of Christ, you know, unfortunately, perfect people, there's none. So I know that's, that's a shock to everybody. Um, and that when you get born again, all the, the garbage that you brought it when you got born again doesn't necessarily just all fall off. Come on now. It's true. And so you come into the body. So this is what you get. You got you get, people get born again coming into the church. And so all the stuff in their life hasn't fallen off. So now everybody in the pew has got an issue. Everybody. Dealing with some level of growth in God. Right? So you get put in the company of people that you don't necessarily do or don't like. Some you most generally won't like because you find yourself sitting on the opposite side of the room from them. <laughs> I know. People, people want to be holy in the church. But you know what? It's better to be real than holy. Because the reality is, the more you get revelation who you are in Christ, the more you realize, I need work. Not he needs work. So and so needs work. If that person would just fix their life, then I wouldn't have a pain in my side. <laughs> and, that, and when you have an attitude like that, you forget that the pain in your side is that there's a personality that might be very close to your own. And God says, you need to change. I said, yeah. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> See, we, we, all run into, we all run into that. Amen? We all run into it. We run into people. We live in a world called this blue planet that we live on, and there's one large number of thing that is on that planet. It's called people. You're never going to escape it. You can sit in your home. You can lock yourself in and say, I'm safe here, but you turn on the TV, there will be people. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So you can't escape people. You have to eventually go out and do your lawn. You eventually have to go to the grocery store. You eventually have to go somewhere and pump gas. You're going to find people. You never know. You might move to an island, and then they decide to put a resort up there. And you thought you were alone, and you get on the other side of the island and realize there's people. You're never going to escape people, and you don't want to. Because people are the thing that God will use to grow you up. He will use people to push the button that you have learned so eloquently to protect. It's true. And I know that's hard for some because they're like, well, I've been hurt. I've been hurt by other church people. I've been hurt by a whole church. I, <laughs> you start running to people and you start finding out people have been hurt by all kinds of stuff. And, uh, and uh, you're never going to get away from people hurting, hurting you. But what you can do is you don't have to let hurt get in you. They're going to come. They are. You're never going to find a perfect church. You're never going to find a perfectly holy congregation. 
You're never going to find a absolutely refined, completely loving, totally giving, totally, absolutely flawless church. You're, you're never going to find it. You're never going to find a perfect preacher. There's not one on the planet. I know people want to, want to assume that the preacher has to be the most holy one in the room, but that is not necessarily the case. Amen. It's true. And people, people are people. We all have stuff. The preacher has stuff. Now, the preacher should at least have some enough sense to uh, spend at least enough time working on himself so that he has something to give when he gets behind the pulpit. Amen? Amen? But you're not going to find a perfect person. So don't, don't get, don't get uh, wounded when you find the people in your life that don't treat you exactly the way. Well, they're supposed to be believers. Well, don't let offense get in you. You're going to have marvelous, wonderful opportunities to be offended. <laughs> and be mad and to be angry and to hold grudges I love Jesus though watch how he, he walked you remember um, he, you remember the, uh, the scrolls were brought out he was, in, he was in his Lord's you know he was in his father's house you know remember that and so the scrolls were brought to him and he said and he said the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he hath anointed me. Remember he goes through that whole thing? And he says, and this day, this scripture has been fulfilled in your ears. You would have thought the people would have been, whoa! The religious people would have been, whoa! That's so great! The Messiah has come. No, they weren't that way. They were angry. Ups who, who? I know your mama. I know your daddy. Who are you? And got mad, got ugly, got nasty. They grabbed him. And they were a mob. And they took him out to a brow of the hill. Because they were, they were, they were irate. Who, who, who gave you the right to say, this script fulfilled to you? Who, you? What right do you have to say that? And so they go to throw him off. You know what? Jesus didn't even pay no attention. Jesus didn't say no words, nothing. He goes like this. He turns and walks. How was he able to turn, walk through an angry crowd that was getting ready to throw him? They had a hold of him. He turned because the love of God, the love that was in him was so strong that he walked through an angry crowd that tried to kill him. Because my time's not yet. You're not taking my life. The, the part of you that you don't understand, I'm going to lay it down when it's time. Sometimes you're going to have to choose to lay your life down for the benefit of somebody that doesn't deserve it. Whew. A holy hush has entered the room. <laughs> Amen. It's true. So, I would give away that CD. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but somebody took it by force. <laughs> I guess that's how faith works. <laughs> I, lo I, lo I, love I, I, I love my black brothers in Christ. Glory to God. They know something about taking something. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, they, and, and, they will, and they will lay hold by force, you know. So, <laughs> and if you're not preaching good, they'll tell you. <laughs> I, love my bra I love my black brothers. I'm telling you right now, they'll keep you straight. They'll, you'll find out if you're on fire because if they just look at you, you go, mm. You know you've lost something. <laughs> and if they stop talking, you're in trouble. Yeah. White folk, if they start, if they stop talking, it's okay. They're just asleep. But, if, <laughs> but, 
But if black brothers go quiet on you, man, they're not asleep. They're just mad. They just like, what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who's this? Who's this dude up in our in a, up in our grill? He needs to go repractice or something. Because because uh, I feel no spirit right now. No spirit. No spirit. No spirit. White folk, they're just asleep. I'm okay with that. I've learned white. I've learned black. Hispanic, you just got to watch Hispanics. They'll just they'll just scream out in the middle of a sermon. <laughs> Asians are really refined, you know, and they'll just sit there and no, no expression on their face at all. And they're getting revelation left and right. And you think they, they hate you. They're just like the whole service, not a peep, not a look, nothing. They're looking straight ahead. And you think, oh, my God, where have you brought, brought me? I think these people hate me. And then you get done preaching, and they come up, I got so much. I got so much. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> you could have shocked me. We are a blessed people to have so many cultures across the board Amen. with different personalities. And you got to learn how to work with them. I love everybody. I don't care what culture you are. Hindus would just be so grateful for everything. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Even if they hate what you just said, they'll thank you for it. <laughs> I'm telling you, we live in a we, we live in a beautiful collage of 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 of, of the world where there are different cultures, different beliefs, but it's all right. Because when you got born again, you got born into one body, one Lord, one God. You got born of one spirit. Amen. And so it doesn't matter what culture you are. You know, I'm just one crazy white guy that acts like a black man. So <laughs> I personally believe I, I should have been born black, but I wasn't. So God made a mistake. I'll talk to him later about it. <laughs> We're just warming up. I've been here for a long time. Remember when I taught when when the last the, the, the very first time that I really told about heaven, um, I'll give you this testimony. I want to share. I will, I'm going to I'll lay out a couple things before we get into that. One a couple. So when I shared in Florida, uh, the heaven thing, um, actually I wasn't assigned to preach that night. I had a good friend of mine. We were doing a revival meeting together, and that night he preached. He preached till nine thirty, and then and then and at the end of his message, um, you know, have you? No, okay, no one's probably ever done this, but I will tell you what I did. So uh, he's preaching, and you know, when you've had a long week, you just zone out. Preachers will just zone out. You know, it's not my time to preach. Uh, and, and, and ministers will just zone out sometimes. Well, I was zoned out, and I'm just minding my own business, thinking about food. <laughs> I know no one has ever like zoned out and just thought about food never anyway because we're all so spiritual here so <laughs> if you've never sat in zone during a message ever in your life you are a liar 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 and we're gonna have a repentance service <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> so I'm sitting thinking about food thinking about sleep <laughs> thinking about everything but what the my friend was preaching on. <laughs> and uh, it, I, I heard, and now Daniel's going to talk about heaven. <laughs> and I'm not paying attention. And I hear Daniel's going to talk about heaven. I about fell out. I'm like, I'm going to what? <laughs> I'm going to share on what? I told you to not ever tell anybody I went to heaven. I'm going to kill you later. <laughs> I'm going I'm to recreate a new friend. I'm going to kill you and make another one. <laughs> I'm going to work on, on that whole thing. You know, Jesus, God spoke, and there was Adam, you know, he took the dust. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that. Make, make a friend that doesn't, like, do stupid stuff. Anyway, so, so and instantly I'm thinking, oh, oh no, I'm not. <laughs> Over my dead body, I'm going to talk about heaven. And down here. Learn how to be led by your inner witness. We got too many people led by their flesh. And they're making decisions based on the feeling 
based on what's going on down on the inside. And so down on the inside, right down in here, the core of who you are, the spirit man down in here, I heard. Go ahead. It's all right. Oh, my God. Are you serious? I, I'm going to kill Daniel still. <laughs> Because that's not the hilarious thing. He's a, Dan, he's a Daniel. So we're both Daniels. So, well, I'll kill him later. But I'll obey you, God. And so, you know, I corrected all that, you know. Don't, don't take that wrong. I won't actually going to kill him. I'll just injure him some. <laughs> so I got up, and I thought, well, you know, I'll, I'll just give a tidbit of, you know, I'll share 30 minutes and, you know, people will be happy, you know, make people happy and not keep them, you know, till late. So, because it was 9.30, so I thought 30, you know, I'll do 30 minutes, they'll get out by 10, they can go eat, they, you know, whatever, it'll be good. So I shared 30 minutes and went to sh shut it down. And the, cra and the people in the room, there were about 30 of them, screamed out all at the same time, don't stop! They screamed, all of them screamed. Scared me like, I mean, I, I needed to repent of being afraid, you know. <laughs> and I thought, well, okay, all right. And, and the pastor said, keep going. I'm like, oh, oh, great, great. The pastor's told me to keep going. Great. So anyway, so I, I thought, well, I'll do 30 more minutes. That'll be 1030. You know, we get them out early. So if you think 30 is early. Anyway, uh, so um, I shared another 30 minutes. And again, everybody screams out, don't stop. And the pastor said, don't stop. So I'm like, okay, what do you want me to do, Lord? What am I doing, you know? You know, sometimes you can be preaching and be listening on down here what God wants you to do. So I thought, well, I'll go an hour. You know, they'll be out by midnight. Hallelujah. Get them out by midnight. Like, you know. And so I shared for another hour. Went to stop. The very same thing happened. And the pastor said, you go as long as you want. Praise the Lord. Crazy. It was absolutely crazy. So I'm like, oh boy. So we begin, I begin to share at, to such a point I just grabbed a chair and we just all sat in a circle and begin to share. Those people stayed till 7.30 in the morning. One person left and they were crying when they left because they had to go to work and they were going to miss some of it. It was supernatural. I shared on heaven from 9.30 in the evening till 7.30 in the morning and no one left. It was the most supernatural thing I've ever seen. If you can get the church to sit in a, in a seat for an hour without squirming, Come on. Hey, that's a move of the Spirit. Yes, <laughs> no one's ever sat in a seat and gone, man, I wish the preacher would stop. <laughs> I've been in services where I wish the minister would stop. <laughs> Don't be nervous. It's okay. Some people get quiet on you, you know? Don't get quiet on me. If you hate everything I'm saying, smile at me. Make me think that I'm doing a great job. <laughs> Do something. Then pray for me later. <laughs> and so, but I want to lay some foundation before we get into heaven, okay? Um, um, not all denominations, I'm not going to say all denominations, but there are some denominations that are really keen on the move of the Spirit, wanting the move of the Spirit. Uh, they're really big on uh, demonstrations, manifestations, all that kind of stuff. They're real big on whether they're going to see an angel or not see an angel or uh, manifestations of the Spirit. And uh, I'm going I'm to share a couple things concerning me. When, when the whole thing happened in 1996, you remember last night I was talking about that Jesus appeared to me in 1996. I no more thought that Jesus was going to stand in my room as if NASA would have called me and said, you're the next man that's going to head to space and go to Mars. <laughs> I'm serious. You would have told me Jesus was going to appear to me. I would have thought, you're crazy. Well. You completely out of your mind. I am a... Hey, I, I, I'm a cracker from Iowa and in, the, in a small town in nowhere. And you're saying to me that, yeah, I would have absolutely laughed God in the face. 
I didn't expect no manifestation of anything. I wasn't looking for one, wasn't praying for one, didn't know you could pray for one. Wasn't even looking for one. <clears throat> and so, um, one thing you need to know, that be careful that you're not so focused on a manifestation. But renew your mind to the word. And if one happens, then it's good. It's all right. Because I always tell people that um, how are you going to judge whether or not the manifestation you're having is from heaven or not? If you're not in the word. Because there's nothing to, because doesn't the Bible say that we, you're to judge a prophet? Did you know that? Not, no, not the pastor. The people in the pew are to judge whether or not it's from heaven or not. Well, if the, if the people are not in the word, then how can they judge what they're hearing is from heaven or not? You, you're not to be like a little baby bird with your mouth wide open, taking every, everything that comes to you and you eat it. Have you ever seen a baby bird? The, bur the mom will come in or the father will come in with whatever it's eaten. And the bird will instantly, that baby bird will instantly open its mouth. And it doesn't matter what that parent is eating. I've watched congregations, whole congregations go, eh, because it was a prophet or it was a preacher or it was an evangelist or they were anointed. And instantly all their mouths go, eh. And there's no judging of anything. I didn't say you judge the person, but you judge the message. You better make sure that what's coming out of that preacher's mouth is lines up with the Bible. Amen. It's true whether you want to agree with that or not. And so it would be wrong for you when I'm sharing today to just go, eh, and just take everything I say. I could have had bad toast this morning. And you're, and you receive bad toast. Well. Hey, See, I, because I feel a need to, to realize that you too in the seat have a responsibility. You make whether the service goes well or not. Right. Yeah. Amen. And so if you, we, we, we start teaching people how to judge prophecy. Remember last night? There was prophecy that went out. There was tongues and interpretation that came out. There was words that came out. You've got to be able to judge that. I've watched people take words. And the person had no inkling for anything in that area. And, the, and actually the one off was the minister. Not the person sitting in the seat. Come on. It was the minister. The minister was off. Man, don't not get quiet at Come that on. moment. <laughs> That is not a good time to get quiet. It's true. I didn't say you judge a minister. I didn't say you point your finger at the man. You have to judge what is coming out of the man. I didn't say judge the person. I said judge the message. Judge what's coming out. Then you won't be offended and hurt. Then you won't just take, okay, a man prophesies a bunch of things and you try to go do it and you don't even have it in your heart to do it. You know how many people I watch want personal prophecy for their life, wanting guidance, wanting... Listen, the minister is not into witchcraft. Nope. I, know, I know church folk that go to, to witches because they can't get a word from God in their own personal life. Messing around with all kinds of cult practices because the church isn't doing their job and the preachers are not judging themselves correctly. I didn't say all preachers. There are great preachers out there. There are great men that are disciplined in this area and they're anointed and they're spot on and they're doing it not so they can get a big offering. They're not doing it so they can get a, you know, their name in lights. They're doing it because they have a heart for the people. Do you understand? But not everybody's like that. And so that's why you can't just, in a service, just, and just almost black out and forget the whole service. And, and you're being fed a bunch of stuff and you're not judging it. You need to go, okay, if a word comes to you, you need to be able to judge. Is that thing in my heart already? Has that already been my heart? Have I already been praying that out? Have I been already talking to God about that? Hey, Jesus. 
Now, if you have, and it bears witness with your, with your spirit that, that you've been dealing with that, and it blesses you, and it causes you to rise up and come to a higher level, then that's good. But if it doesn't bear witness, you, there's nowhere in the Bible where it says you just take every prophecy you hear and run with it. Amen. It is true. And so people have been hurt and harmed, and people have tried to jump out and do ministry because ministers will prophesy people into ministry. Mm. Dangerous stuff right there. God calls men into ministry. I said God does that. And so, God is the caller. And I'll tell you one thing. If he calls, he equips. I've never seen God put, you, put people into a position that are not equipped. Amen. If you can't look people square in the face, you're probably not a public speaker. Uh, I know people that actually are worried that they're not gonna that, that they're never gonna be used of God because they think the only place they can be used is here. It's not true. There's a huge pulpit and it's not there. It's wherever you are in your world. Your job, the grocery store, the park. Whatever you do in your daily life, that is your pulpit. And use it. Use your pulpit. I know a guy. Well, I'll share this. So, my wife's dad, I don't think ever can meet a... a, a, I don't think he ever meets anybody he can't talk to. (laughs) It's uncanny. He will talk to a fence post if he'll talk to him. (laughs) <laughs> he'll talk to you. I mean he's just that way he can walk up and make a friend in 20 minutes I'm not really that way but he is and he doesn't realize what a gifting he, he has some people are just like that dude they, they, they'll be standing in line and they'll just start chatting with you they'll learn everything about you in 20 minutes and you're like I just told this guy everything about me why did I say everything about him do you know I'll be in a grocery line minding my own business and somebody will turn and start talking to me. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Uh, why are you talking to me? I just want to get to the grocery line. <laughs> why? Because they, that anointing's on me. Because they feel comfortable and they, and they feel like they'll just, and, they'll blur, and then they'll say after they're done, I don't understand why I just spent the last 20 minutes talking to you. <laughs> I don't know either. But thank you for wasting 20 minutes of my time. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, hey, just because I might feel that way, I don't say that to him. Well. <laughs> my story. Well. It's okay. Being, you know what? Somebody needs to finally see a preacher real. Okay? Not this fake facade. Not this, oh, oh, he's so holy, thou, blah, 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 blah. You do that, please don't make, no, I'll vomit. If you don't like me, I'd rather have you tell you tell I have you tell me you don't like Come me. On. I can handle that better than oh I love you so much. <laughs> and you can just feel that it's just words, but they really inwardly just date your guts. That's right. <laughs> I'd rather be told the truth. Amen. It's okay. It hurts, you know, when they say I don't like you, and I'm like, well, okay, well, I probably probably don't like you very much either, but that's yeah. all right. <laughs> I know you don't you don't know how to handle a preacher saying I don't like you back but <laughs> yeah, well we're all working on the flesh you know well I do I love everyone down in my spirit I love everybody now my flesh is working I'm working on him he's in a constant state of uh, construction I'm in constant remodeling mode. Every believer better get ready because you are right now, whether you think you are, you're in, in, you're in a remodeling mode until you get to heaven. And so that's why we should be able to stand, uh, 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 be able to, to work with people. We should all be able to do that. You know why? It's because we're all remodeling. And sometimes remodeling isn't fun. 
Because sometimes you're going to have to tear out a wall that you thought was, was useful. And you find out later that, that wall shouldn't really even be there. And so walls are being torn out. And mindsets are being torn out. And, and attitudes are being torn out. And all kinds of stuff. That's why some, I think so, sometimes why people come to church and are cranky. Because they're in a huge state of remodeling. And, uh, and then you get around others that are in a great state of being remodeled. And what do you have? You have one cranky person that's being remodeled, meeting another person that's cranky that's being remodeled. And then they, they cross paths. And if they cross paths wrong, then you've got two cranky people. <laughs> now, we've got, now we've got a state a state of remodeling problem because we have two people that are remodeling on the inside and they're not really handling it very well. Or you've got one person that's in a state of, of, of just being remodeled and they're feeling pretty good about themselves. And they're like, I'm doing pretty good. And they get around, then they get around somebody that's in a pretty nasty state of remodeling. And then they're like, people are just so mean. Why are people so mean? Well, you were probably not very nice three weeks ago when you were in a state of remodeling, too. <clears throat> and so, uh, and so um, it's okay. So we'll go back to what I was saying a moment ago, is that, that you cannot base any, you cannot, you cannot form uh, your, uh, your walk in God based on uh, Signs, wonders, miracles, demonstrations, uh, and uh, uh, encounters from God. You cannot build your Christian life on that. I've, and I've, I've, I've run into them. You do realize that. I have run into them. They think that just because <clears throat> an angel or they've had a dream, they will, they will actually form their Christian walk based on all that. No. You base your walk in God based off the Word. It is the Word of God. How much Word do you have in you? Now, um, I had quite a bit of Word in me. I may have not had a lot of revelation, but I had a lot of Word in me. There's a difference between having Word and revelation, by the way. You can, you can quote scriptures verbatim, back to back to back to back, but if you don't have revelation of them, then the, the word you know won't do you any good. That's right. Because all it is is memorization, and you are an echo of what you've either heard or what you've read. So all you are is an echo. You're not a voice. Okay. Hey. One of the things you've got to understand about authority is that, you, that the reason why a lot of Christians don't have authority I didn't say everybody, I said, but there's a lot that don't understand their authority is because they're echoing something they heard from the pulpit or they're echoing something they read. Your real authority is becoming a voice that the devil recognizes. Does he know your voice? Or, or what does he hear? You remember the sons of Sceva? They said, we're going to cast you out by the, by the message that Paul preaches and Jesus preaches. Remember the sons of Sceva? Remember there? there? And, and so they go to cast this, this, these demons out. And these demons reply and go, Paul we know. Jesus we know. Who are you? And they leaped on them and beat the tar out of them. And those, those men that came to do that ran out of the house naked and beat up. Devils know whether you're an echo or you're a voice. Your circumstances know whether you're an echo or you're a voice. Your body knows. That's the one thing you can't get away from is your body. Your body knows if you believe the word that it says that by his stripes you're healed. And you quote that scripture. Th that your, your body knows whether or not you're just echoing something somebody told you. That's why some people never get healed. I, I quote the scripture. I quote, 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 quote the scripture. Why does it ever work for me? Because you're quoting something you've memorized. You're quoting something that somebody has said, and you think it's a, it's a good verbal cliche, and you're trying to say it 
and you're trying to get the same results that minister's getting. You have for yourself have to become a voice. You have to get so convinced of it that even if you breathe your last breath, you're convinced that by his stripes I'm healed and that God has the power to even after you die, raise it up from the grave. You have to lose fear of death. People afraid of dying. If I get sick, what will happen to my kids? What, if I get sick, what will happen? And there's always worry there. Well, there's fear there. Well, we know that faith, faith and fear cannot operate in the same vehicle. And the Bible says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Don't worry. The Bible says that God gave you a measure of his own faith. So you've got God's faith living right down on the inside of you. But what will, no, what will uh, negate all of that is that if you're full of fear about something, the, the, you can say the scripture, but the voice of fear speaks. Now you say, well, how do I know so much about that particular area, arena? Well, when you work at the prayer and healing center and people get reports they're going to die. And they're given less than a month to live. And they come to you expecting you to do something about it. Oh, no pressure or anything. And uh, like the preacher has the ability or the minister has the ability to just pop you out, out of uh, the, the jaws of death. It doesn't work like that. It can. The gifts of healing can come on you. And you can put your hand on them. That does operate. I'm not, I'm not negating that. But, but that, that operation just doesn't happen because I willed it. It happens. That there are people who are known, that anointed. My wife actually has a stronger healing anointing than I do. I'm not ashamed to say that. She operates in the gifts of healing. I don't always operate that way. She does. I've watched her pray and watch her hands heat up. I'm like, dear God, well, I can't have that. I'm, like, I'm, not, I'm, not. I'm, the, I'm the healing tech. She's over there. Oh, it's just so easy. <laughs> and I go sit down. <laughs> but I'm okay with that. Because, see, the problem is we got people that want it so bad, they'll start getting over there and start messing with spirituals, and they get over into the demonic. Because they want it so bad. Now, it, listen, any spirituals that you come in contact with, they are to first be judged, number one. Number two, ask yourself the motive behind why you want it. Do you want it to bring attention to you? Or do you want it because you want God to get glory? Amen. Now, when heaven happened for me, when I went to heaven, um, laying a little bit more foundation here, when I went to heaven, I wasn't looking to go. I wasn't looking for an angel. wasn't looking for Jesus. To, I was in shock that he even showed up, to be honest. Because between 1996... 1996 and 1999, Jesus appeared to me between 11 and 13 times. Never one time did I pray Jesus appeared to me. Never one time. I was shocked every time he showed up. Because I knew me. I had a lot of problems. I had a lot of anger issues. I had a lot of... A lot of... Uh, Guilt. I had a lot of shame. I had a lot of, I'm worthless. I'm a nobody. <clears throat> and, uh, and so it was a shock to me. He even, we didn't even come into my room. I'd be like, what in the world? Of all the billions of people in the earth. Why are you coming here? In Iowa, you must really have nothing good to do in life. <laughs> You are bored out of your mind. You, are, you must have a worse miserable life than I do. Because why would you come to Iowa? I wouldn't come to Iowa. If I was the king of everything, I'd be like, I'm not coming to Iowa. I certainly ain't going to Oskaloosa. And I certainly ain't going to no trailer park. 
<laughs> you can forget that. Trailer park. <laughs> there ain't nothing can come out of a trailer park. And uh, because I find that as I share stuff like this, it helps people because they realize that, listen, you're not as bad off as you think you are. That you can feel like the barrel's on top of you and somebody's filled the barrel with something and the enemy's sitting on top of the barrel looking down going, what are you going to do? <laughs> and I know people with money that feel that way. You don't, you don't have to be poor and feel that way. I, will know, I know rich folk that are feeling, feel that way. On, that, that they wish they had no money, then they wouldn't have any pressure. People think, oh, they got money, they're happy. No, 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 no. No, no. I've met too many that aren't happy even when they have money. You can be dead poor and have nothing and be happy. Right. I've met, I've, I've watched happy people be dead broke, have nothing, and be happy. I've watched rich folk who had everything, miserable. So what's the difference? Well, One's made a decision. I'm going to be happy even if I have nothing. And the other realizes that with wealth comes more responsibility. With more responsibility comes more pressure. And some people don't like that. And they're miserable. And so you can't go by what you're, what you're viewing on the outside with people. And so now he just happened to raise me up out of a really, really hard situation. that He, he just did. And it was a shock to me when he showed up in 1996. It was a shock to me when he showed up the second time. It was a shock when he showed up the third and fourth and fifth time, sixth time and seventh time and eighth time. And you know, and you're sitting here wondering to yourself, man, Jesus must really be really, I'll be, the, I'll be truthful with you here, is that I thought Jesus had a really boring life because he was coming visiting me. I'm sure there's somebody really important he can go visit. I'm sure there's a minister out there that really needs a visitation. Come on, preacher. I'm in a trailer park in Iowa near Beacon. Does that place exist? Does Beacon exist here in, here in Iowa? Yes, it exists. Oh, dear Lord. So the place actually exists, and he actually knows where the actual trailer park is. So I'm not lying to you. So the preacher ain't lying to you. And so I can tell you the color of the trailer. So the trailer was blue, if you want to know. Tiny little lot with a brand new shed. That we probably shouldn't have bought. <laughs> the shed was probably more than the house. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to laugh. Um, and... And uh, so, um, but I never prayed for visitations. Never asked for one. Actually, every time it happened, it was such a humbling thing. Because I felt worthless. Who am I? What do I have to offer the world? You're coming to me, and you want me to go to the world? You want me to go to the church with this? Have you forgotten I'm in a trailer park? How am I going to get from a trailer park to the world from here? Hey. I'm lucky if I can get to my church from here. And, uh, and so... Be careful what you seek for and be careful what you pray for. Because just because you want something doesn't necessarily mean that's the plan of God. Because if you push for, for a manifestation, you may get one. And if you don't have word in you, you won't know what it is. And you'll swear up and down it's from heaven and it's not. And so I want to keep people out of error. Because people hear a story about heaven or a manifestation and people get silly with it. Remember this. Anytime you have, this is a good thing to write down if you're writing notes. Anytime you have a manifestation of any type, 
if it is from heaven, there is always assignments that are connected. They're not purposeless. If something comes to you and declares something to you and there's no purpose behind it, it's just coming to you because he wants you to have something. And there's no purpose behind it. It's not from heaven. God does not come without assignments. God does not waste his time coming, bringing a manifestation without him bringing you a reason. He's coming for a reason to you. That's how you can judge it. If there's no assignment attached to it, and there's no purpose behind it, you know. I need to leave that alone. Jesus never one time appeared to me without purpose. He came with the purpose. When he walked in and he sat down and he opened the scriptures to me, there was purpose to get me to a, get me beyond where I was at. And there was always purpose and there was always encouragement and there was always help. And there was always... Uh, uh, you, remember, you remember in the scriptures where it says... When he was talking to his disciples, Jesus, when he was walking the earth. And he said, and, and that Jesus opened their understanding. If Jesus isn't open, if, if you have an appearance by an angel or anything else, or, a, or Jesus, who says he's Jesus, he will always take you to the word. Okay. He will never take you outside the word. He'll never give you a suggestion about the word. He will always bring you to the word. And he will always open your mind to the word. That's how you know. Because I don't want people freaking out that, that well, what if, I have a, what if I have an encounter with God? How do I know if it's God? Listen, I don't want to handicap you either. And say, well, push all that aside, you know. And no, 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 no. I don't want you to do that either. Because you might have one. I believe in the days that we're living in, we're going to have more of them. I believe we're going to have increase of angels. Now, I understand some things about angels because I've seen them. And I've seen both sides of them. I see more of the heavenly type than I've seen of the wicked type. If you're, if you're a type of person and you tend to see wicked spirits all the time, you need to check up on your walk with God. Because you're born of heaven. You're not born of darkness. You don't belong to darkness. Why, are you watch, why, are you, why do you see more darkness than you see light? I've run, I've run into Christians that see more darkness than light. Why? Why are you, why are you paying attention to darkness? Why, why do you see more evil spirits? Why do you see uh, 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 angels of darkness more than you see of angels of light? Why? Why? Why are, you, why are you doing that? Because you don't belong to that realm. You don't belong to darkness. You don't, you don't belong to that realm below the earth. You are not of that world. You belong of a race from above. And you have been sealed by that realm. Amen. And so, um, I don't want to tell people to not be open. Be open. But don't be always constantly praying for it. You just stay Stay, stay steady with the word. And if they, if they come and you see it, then you know how to judge it. If it comes and, then, if it comes and, it, and it glorifies God, then you know. If it comes and it always questions God, then you know. You know, Satan, when he came to tempt Jesus, did not question Jesus' validity. Did you notice that? He questioned the word. And Jesus responds to Satan when questioned about the word and brought the word back to him. And Jesus defeated Satan with the word. Not even Paul had a visitation from Satan. There's only one record that Satan approached somebody. Jesus is the only one recorded in the scriptures where he was approached by the devil. The devil himself. Jesus is the only one recorded in scripture uh, being having a, a physical encounter from the devil. 
himself. Do you know that the Bible says that Satan stands before God day and night making accusation against the church? Did you know that? So then how, how can Satan come and be in your house? He can't be in one more, more than one place at one time. And the Bible says that he is before him day and night making accusation against the church. So when somebody says, well, Satan came in, no, an, an evil spirit may have. Maybe uh, an angel of darkness might have. But I got new, good news. You're not facing Satan. He stands before God day and night. Day and night, making accusation against the church. I didn't say there's not evil spirits. There are. But we shouldn't be afraid of them. My goodness, greater is he that is in you than he that's in this world. And remember I, a moment ago, I said, be a voice, don't be an echo. Okay. So when you become a voice, then those evil spirits won't mess with you anymore. Because the word in your mouth will be the word you believe. Amen. 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 I have to lay a lot of foundation before I get into this stuff because squirrely thinking sets into the people. Because then they, they get heaven minded. Listen, I guarantee you when I start talking about it, the presence of God is going to move in. And you're going to start experiencing heaven. And I, and I can guarantee you that when you have those moments in God, listen, you, you got to understand something. When you're, when you're having contact with spirituals like that, and it's okay to have experiences, spirituals, those are, those are okay to have. Every believer needs to be having them, by the way, on a regular basis. Why do you think I lay hands on people all the time? And put out what I put out. Because people need to have an encounter. Amen. It's good to have moments in God where you just get so lost. Remember last night I was talking about getting lost in God. It's good to get lost in God. It's good. And so, but I lay a strong foundation before I start talking about these things. So that that foolish thinking doesn't set in. Because I don't know you. I don't know what sets you off. I don't know what excites you. I might say one thing about heaven and it get you so excited that you get lost in that one thing. Because some of it will go whew, right over your head and you won't even realize. But an impartation was made. And it will feel like it went over your head but it was imparted. There's sometimes that not everything is just simply for you. There's a lot of people in the room. And all of a sudden, an impartation's been made to one, and it kind of goes over your head, but then the next thing that's said, whoo, and something is imparted on the inside of you. Come on. Hey. Heavenly impart. You, do you realize that you're a citizen of heaven? Yes. Right now. Yes. The Bible says you're seated with him in heavenly places. Yes. You might be in this body, sitting in that chair, enjoying that comfy, the, the comfiness of the chair, which I really enjoy. No, I'm just joking. And, uh, and just be sitting there. But while you're sitting there, or even at your job that might be stressing you out, you're still a citizen of heaven. And you're seated with him. You are. You're seated with him in heavenly places. Far above, what does it say? Prince of powers and powers, mights and dominions and every name that's named. You are sitting in a position of authority with him above every situation in your life. You're seated with, you're, that's why when you learn your authority and you learn what, you, what to say out of your mouth and you become a voice. Th listen, the kingdom of darkness knows. And they will back off of you the moment they know. Oh boy, he knows his authority. We're getting out of here. Hey, glory. And you won't have to scream at the top of your lungs and command a devil to go. You'll just simply go, In the name of Jesus, every demonic power, you must go. It's not your inflection of voice. It's the authority that you carry in your voice. 
You don't have to scream at a devil. He can, he can hear you loud and clear right. in a whisper. That's right. Hey, glory. And he will run the Bible.